My name's Craig, and I'm trekking over 40 miles along the legendary UNESCO heritage site Hadrian's Wall over four days along with my mum. In this second part we'll be taking in more of the epic views and scenery, seeing some of the famous landmarks and discovering more of the ancient history of this Roman frontier before finishing in one of the coolest cities in the north of England. There will also be some gripping encounters with some of the locals as well as cultural moments tasting local delicacies. In the first episode, we made our way north to Cumbria and checked into our first village B&B. Our hike then began with some local religious ruins before we hit the main wall path and the various castles, turrets and museums that are lined along the way. We faced some serious climbs and scenery but our second day culminated with the wall covering over hills, ridge lines at the highest point of the whole trek. And with that in mind, it's time to begin the next leg. Hey, welcome to day three of our Hadrian's Wall hike. Uh, today we're up bright and early. We're going to be covering 14 miles today to the town of Wall. Um, and we're going to be starting off going back up onto the ridges again. So we've got a nice steep bit coming up, up the side of the cliff. Um, but then it should flatten out along the way as we go. But there's going to be a couple of famous bits. The scenery is going to be epic again, like yesterday. But there's going to be some famous bits um, to show you as we go as well. So get ready for that. With legs still a little achy, but well practiced from the day before, we climbed back to the wall at the steep slopes to the high ridge line. And from there, we were greeted by one of the most amazing views we'd seen so far, and one of the famous picture postcard moments. This is famous for being one of the best preserved ones along the entire route. You can still see all the little rooms that would have been inside, <coughs> and the gatehouse would have been the way in and out of this final frontier between the land to the north and the Roman Empire to the south. Oh, and here it is. And this is Nicomore Gap. This is probably one of the most famous trees in all of the UK, if not one of the most photographed in all of the world. And you should recognise it from Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, Kevin Costner, Morgan Freeman, 1990s. Scene here where there's a little mini fight scene, child runs up the tree, saves the day. But yeah, it's absolutely awesome spot. We're so lucky as well to be here where there's absolutely no one else. And back on top of the ridge, we had panoramic views across Crag Lock and Northumberland. The scenery is just getting better and better. Just look at this. So many beautiful hidden spots along this walk. It's like a little lake with our own little beach going. Absolutely epic. Now, despite what I said earlier, I'd actually say that this one, Mile Castle 37, is probably one of the most best preserved we've seen so far. Now, as you can see, you've got the rooms clearly, and you've actually got what's left of some of this archway as well, with one of the exits out into the northern frontier. We've actually come to a bit where we're allowed to walk on the wall. Normally for most of it, you walk to the side of it to help preserve, but this bit's really where you can actually walk a, a couple hundred meters or so, so it's really, really cool. But remember, normally, don't walk on the wall.
and now we've made it to Housestead's Fort along the wall, which is one of the best preserved ones you'll find. Um, so look behind us, loads of buildings have been excavated by archaeologists, so we're going to have a check around now and see what we can see. Set high in a dramatic escarpment on the wall itself, Housestead's Roman Fort takes you way back to the Roman Empire. Formerly known as Vercosivisium, Housestead's Roman Fort was built during 122 to 32 AD. Now run by English Heritage, you can wander around the old barrack blocks and hospital and even peer into some of the oldest toilets you'll ever see. Entrance to all of the English Heritage forts costs around £10, but does include a museum with more interesting stories and amazingly preserved artefacts. After Housestead's Fort, we picked up the Walls Trail once again to take in the final well-preserved castles and turrets, as well as those amazing views from the peaks. The wall's getting lower and it's thinning out a little bit now across these peaks and we can see straight into the distance. It's going to be flat but the wall's disappearing slowly for the looks of it. So coming down off the hills the wall's getting less and less visible now. It's now down to just uh, Slide of a mound of wall. Um, hopefully, we'll see it's more, a bit more coming up. Some more metal castles along the way as well. So even though we're absolutely loving the walk and the scenery, you can sort of get a sense if you're a Roman soldier standing here day on day, month after month, year on year, just staring out into sort of nothingness of danger and empty lands. And particularly, I can imagine in winter when it would be bitterly cold up here. And yeah, pretty grim for them, but awesome for us now, eh? Well, the wall might have disappeared a little, we still have the big boundary ditch that stretches off way into the distance. Hey up there, all day, is it? How do? Now this is pretty cool. On the journey just outside the um, another Roman fortress called Bricolotia, there is a temple, third century Roman temple, Temple of Mithras, and it's really, really well preserved. Even got some of the altar at the bottom. Pretty cool, eh? <laughs> Don't eat me fat. And then here's the outer embankments now, outer walls of the Broccolitia Fort, which the temple's just outside of. This could be our very final bits of Hadrian's Wall in this sort of state. Might just be mounds, ditches, or even not even that from now on. Alright, we've got to another really significant point um, of Hadrian's Wall right now. When you're up on a hill, and particularly in this section, you can see just how the Roman soldiers carved their ditch through sheer rock, 
it shows just how much of a feat this project actually was. So that's pretty much the end of day three. It's got a couple of miles to go to the sign of war, but that's because right now there's not really much to see. We did like eight to ten of the miles of the 14, still up there on the amazing cliffs, We've seen the wall, but then for the last few miles, nothing. Nothing. It's been it's been a slog, it's been warm. But we're almost at the town of war we're going to. That's the end of our big day. And then tomorrow we have a final nine miles to the town of Corbridge. And just one other slight negative, you might just have a little moan. In the summer like this, the worst thing is the flies. Obviously it's like cow and sheep shit everywhere. So constantly swiping flies um, off your face. Um, small criticism, thanks Hadrian. But we soon made it to the small village of Wall for our overnight stay. We made it! So our final push, day four um, of our hike along Hadrian's Wall. Today we're going to Corbridge, which is nine miles away. It's a former Roman garrison town, so there should be quite a bit to see there. But we're not expecting to see too much of the wall now on this part of the trek, given that it looks like the main bit of the ruins were up on the mountains, and here it's just sort of mounds or bits of ditches. But we've just left uh, the village of Wall now, which um, really interesting place. It's actually built from some of the stones of Hadrian's Wall, so that's why around here some of the stones um, have disappeared, because they've been used over the years, particularly in the Middle Ages, to build churches, um, walls, hospitals, houses, etc. Um, but it was a really nice little village. The big excitement of this bit of wall now is guessing which bit is actually going to be the last bit of wall we see. Is it this one? Don't know. We'll find out. Sadly, this was the last bit of Hadrian's Wall we would see above ground, but we were still following the long defensive ditch and the occasional outline of a mile castle. and there was still time to harass some of the locals. Order! Order! Well, that moment was pretty magic. Been trying to touch the sheep, not in that way, since the beginning of this trip, trying to get it on camera because the lambs are all at that perfect little fluffy stage right now. So yeah, that was great. Ooh, baby Christmas trees! It's like a Christmas tree farm. Someone's left a little poem. I'm working on me. It's a project. So apt. Yeah, long term project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my dear mum referring to me. But it was back to it with our final few miles and one more bit of nature to keep us company. All the flies are back with an absolute vengeance. We've got five sitting on the GoPro right now. Yeah, well, I'm out of shower this morning. It's hot. I'm a sweaty mess. So that's probably why. So that's pretty much it. It's pretty much the end of the road for us. Um, walking along Hadrian's Wall, we've completed our stretch. We're now going to be turning off into Corbridge. Uh, it's taken a couple of miles to get there. So not quite the way we'd want to finish uh, this, sitting in a field sweaty uh, full of flies. But it's feeling a bit emotional nonetheless. feel quite attached to the wall over the past four days. Um, and it's yeah, a bit of a sad ending, ending, but it's been an awesome trip so far. Are you emotional to finish? Happy to finish. <laughs> but you've enjoyed it, good experience. Yeah, it's a good experience. Uh, more challenging than I expected in the hard bits. Probably yesterday being the long slog was the toughest, but today's been good.
And just like that, our four day trek was over and we arrived at our walk's finishing point of Corbridge. Corbridge is your quintessential Northumberland town that attracts many visitors for its nearby countryside walks and for our final stay we'll be in the popular Angel Inn. Historically, Corbridge was also a former Roman army garrison town and the local museum tells of its strategic importance as a crossroads by the River Tyne as you get to walk around the well excavated streets and buildings of the old town. You can easily see from walking around that Corbridge would have been a bustling town where Romans and civilians would live and trade, and it remained a vibrant community right up until the end of Roman rule in the early 5th century. But as cool as this was to us, you can also imagine after four days we were kind of getting a little Roman doubt. So the Roman town of Corbridge pretty much signifies the end of our Hadrian's Wall expedition, trek, hike. Yep. That's our 40 adventure. adventure, definitely. <laughs> That's our 43 miles um, done. We're now in the town of Corbridge where we're going to definitely freshen up. But then it's going to be a nice little pub crawl because Corbridge is full of about three or four pubs. So we're going to get around them. Um, have some beers, toast our celebration, um, but you don't need to see all of that. Um, but this isn't going to be the end of the video, so there's going to be a little bit more to come. Um, much out. The next day we made our way to Newcastle to mark and celebrate the end of this trip. Welcome to Newcastle, where we're going to be spending the next day and one night at the end of our Hadrian's Wall trek. Splashing out on a well-deserved luxury night at the Vermont Hotel, we've come to see all that this vibrant city has to offer. Newcastle is famed across the UK for being one of the best nights out destinations in the country, but it's got a huge art, sport and science culture, and not to mention being the home of British icons Anton Deck and Greg's Bakery. And just in case you were bored of castles and walls... This city was the Roman port at the end of the wall and it's had a strong maritime connection ever since. Today's medieval fortifications go back as far as the 12th century following the Norman invasions and the castle played a key role in the wars against Scotland and the English Civil War. And for those football fans amongst you, Newcastle is also home to one of the cathedrals of English football, St James's Park, Newcastle United. But now there was one final thing to tick off. One thing you can't go to Newcastle and not do, you have to do right now on the tour. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. Check out the bars down on the east side. One thing I can definitely vouch for is you're going to have a great time in this city, whether solo, with friends, or indeed you're going on 30 mum. But sadly that brings this entire trip to a close and there's nothing left to do but make the three hour train journey back to London. So I guess that's all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching what is my first ever YouTube series and for coming on this adventure with me. I mean, Hadrian's Wall was absolutely fantastic and I really recommend you visit this amazing, unique part of the UK for all of its history and its ease of access, whether you want to do the whole thing as a big segment like I do, or you can just do it in little bits, day trips here, visiting the forts and things like that. But now, anyway, for me, it's going to be on to other things and I hope you can sit with me for what's to come over the next few weeks and months. Coming up next is my Isle of Wight film, which I filmed a few weeks ago now. 
Um, this will take a couple of about a month or so, maybe a little bit more to, to put together. But then after then, I'm finally going to be getting out of the UK, I'm going on my first um, flight in 2021. And I'll be going to new places across Europe over the coming months. And then after that, beyond still. So lots to look forward to. Um, I hope you can uh, stick with my channel. And please, again, support me by clicking the subscribe button and leaving any comments, whether it be constructive or whatever. I really want to know what you think of this. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, please do. But again, thanks for watching.